You mentioned you had some things going on in Texas. We work nationwide. We've been focusing on Texas. That's the one thing that I love about utility helpers is we have the ability to help with so many things. You love being around people that are just like you. And you don't need yeah. people that are just no, like you. Yeah. I need the opposite. <laughs> Hello, all you beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of Talking St. Pete. Before I dive into today's guest, I just want to give a big thank you to everyone who is listening, watching, liking, subscribing, sharing with your friends, tagging us on social media, doing all the fun things that you do to get the word out. Uh, the show is growing uh, pretty quickly, faster than we expected, and we're having some amazing guests. I can't wait to dive into today's. But before I do that, I want to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Bogdan Homes, which is my company, and how we are affording to keep producing amazing content for you guys. So if you know anyone who's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, please do not hesitate to reach out. And that leads us to today's guest, Elijah Ramsey, the uh, guy that's helping everyone with the utility helpers, which is the company that he has. And I can't wait to learn more about it. We use them. Uh, they help all of our, our, our clients and customers um, transition uh, over their utilities. And I'll let Elijah speak more on that, but he's very involved in the community and I'm really excited to learn all the fun things that he has going on. Elijah, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So, so I want to get into everything about St. Pete that you know, but I think it's, it, I want to highlight the awesomeness that you're doing and, the, and thank you for making uh, the utility experience seamless for our clients that we used you uh, a bunch of times and everyone has a lot of awesome things to say about it. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm glad that's happening because I'm so hands off, <laughs> right? It's something I don't, I don't have to worry about. So how, how did that come to be? Give us a little blip of uh, utility helpers and then I want to dive into all of you. Sure. So uh, my background prior to utility helpers was in real estate. And um, it was one of those things that I constantly saw the need, especially as I expanded into other markets and moved into other markets. It's such a pain figuring even just the part of figuring out who do I need to call. And so, you know, you're working with a client and they're like, you've got it on your checklist. Like, hey, you need to set up your utilities before we close. OK, great. Who do I call? And, you know, if you're if you're working a very small area, you probably know or at least know uh, might be this one or that one. When you start working a larger area, you realize what a pain that is. And then you think about all the ones where, you know, agents are working in a massive area or new to the area or like Pinellas County. We have 24 municipals just in one county right here. Um, and they all overlap. Like mm -hmm. you, you have some areas where two or three of those companies service the same little area and mm -hmm. there's just little dividing lines and sometimes part of it's shared, shared between different yeah. ones. So. Saw the need on that side and thought there has to be an easier way to do this. And then looking at further down the process, every one of those companies is going to ask you the exact same questions. Who are you? Where are you moving to? Where are you moving from? What data are you moving? You know, going through the service questions. And at, at some point, we started realizing, like, there's there's something missing here because this could be so much easier and and it's so difficult and you're, you're dealing with multiple companies. Yeah. And then something happens and you need to change it. You've got to reach out to all those different companies. So that's, that's where the idea came from. And uh, if saw a need and, and, and filled it as any good entrepreneur does. So, so, I mean, I have a great idea, but I want you to explain it. How does it, does it work? What does it cost people? How do they find you? Sure. So, um, very simple. Um, most of the time it's provided through a real estate professional like yourself. Um, and basically once, once it's handed off to us, basically we, we receive like, Hey, this person's moving into this house expected to close on this date. We take over from there. Um, they receive a welcome email from us that says, Hey, these are all the things that we're going to help you do. Click here to schedule your call. They schedule a call at their convenience instead of sitting on hold, waiting for companies to answer the phone. They say, I want to call next Wednesday at 3 PM. Next Wednesday at 3 PM, their phone rings 15 to 20 minutes. We have everything set up. Even they, they're having a phone call, conversation with you. Phone conversation with utility helpers. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not with me. Something's right. yeah. wrong, and I'm probably going to mess it up yeah. if I'm on the phone with them. <laughs> fair, yes. fair enough. Fair enough. But, <laughs> but yes, absolutely. Yeah. And um, so it makes it a really seamless experience for them. And um, it's it's funny as we as we of course we're constantly gauging what we can do to make the customer experience better, and we're talking to people. And it's funny we get the the least feedback from like first time home buyers because they've never had to do it. So they just think, okay, yeah, this was cool. It was easy. Um, we get the most feedback oddly enough from military people that have moved because usually the conversation starts out with, 
I've moved 200 times. Like, I, I got this. I, I, I don't really need your help. And we're like, hey, it's been provided by your real estate professional. It's not going to cost you anything. You know, let us let us help you. We'll, we'll make it easier. We're going to save you some time and money. They do it. And they're the ones that leave, like, the book reviews. For sure. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you myself as being a veteran and moving around and having to do that. Uh, to know that that was, you know, can get all taken care of for you. That's a huge help. I mean, I, I mean, it, it seems like, oh, that's simple and I can do it, but to, to figure out who to call, who's my trash water, like, no, I, I'm so grateful for you and that you've been able to to help all, all, of, our, all of our people um, around. And I know we've gotten feedback that has been awesome from it. So, so appreciate you awesome. on that. And so if they're, if they're working with a professional real estate agent, then there's no cost to them, right? Because and and uh, there you you work something out with the utility companies that, and that's how you're staying in business. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. So are you local here to St. Pete? Um so I've been here this time uh since 2012. Moved oh. moved to St. Pete. I was I was an army brat growing up. Both parents were military actually, so um little little interesting. So my business partner is actually a military brat as well. His dad was was an officer. Um, and they moved base to base. Mine was a little different because both parents were military and they were both in intelligence. Mm. So we they were usually put. not on bases and we were bouncing around to different places, but not on bases. Got it. Oh, so you did do a lot of moving. Yeah. yeah you yeah. got it. You got it. Well, and thanks for your service. Thank you for your service. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay. So not, so you military brat in a sense li- lived all over and now yep. have been here yep. since, since 2012. And if you've watched St. Pete transform, in those in that time, tell me what's yeah. the biggest thing that you've seen change since since 2012. So I'll I'll rewind a little further back. Years ago, I'd actually lived in Tampa back in the 90s, and um, St. Pete was nothing like it is today. It was a completely different place. Honestly, we we didn't come over very often. We had a couple friends in St. Pete, and usually we were trying to get them to come over to Tampa. Um, and we came back and, uh, and, and, well, we actually started looking in like, I think it was like end of 2010, beginning of 2011. Um, we started looking around. Stacy went, looked at houses one day. We were looking in Tampa and she came over to St. Pete and she came back and she's like, so I went over to that St. Pete place. <laughs> I was like, yeah, how'd that go? And she's like, I think I like it over there. And I was like, really? Because St. Pete was not the St. Pete that we see today. I was like, are you sure? Maybe Sarasota or something. Right. Did you end up in the right spot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. So I came over and checked it out. Absolutely fell in love. St. Pete is like, it's it's now the place that I've lived the longest in my entire life. Um, and um, it's it's so hard because I, I typically love moving and just like keeping the ball rolling. And I feel like, man, I've been here too long, but there's so many great things about living here. Um, What's your favorite? <sighs> You know, that's, that's a hard one. The, I mean, it's just the, especially like St. Pete, the vibe, like we have everything you could want. We've got beaches, we've got, we've got the downtown waterfront. You've got everything that you would want from a big city, but it's like a small town. Um, That's, that's my favorite part. I mean, the, the lifestyle, the, the active lifestyle that we have, the diverse cultures that we have. And like anything you could want, but still I I can ride my bicycle through downtown during rush hour and and not feel like I'm going to die. It doesn't have, (laughs) yeah, it's not, it's not city, city. Exactly. And, you know, for people who haven't really experienced the city or somehow haven't made made it over into Tampa, they don't, they think downtown St. Pete has traffic. I'm like, that that does not have traffic. Uh, Riverview has traffic. Riverview has traffic. (laughs) Tampa. I went over there. My, my cousin just started going to, uh, to UT. And, uh, so went over there to have dinner with him the other night in rush hour. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is why I don't cross the bridge. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> there's so much fun stuff happening over here but uh, it's going to take me an hour to find parking to get to it uh Absolutely. just 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 bad timing yeah you're right about st pete the vibe you know and that's really the, everyone knows now if you've been listening to the show what i'm constantly searching after is w- the vibe how do we you know because a vibe is just a word what does that mean you know and, yeah. it, and it and for st pete it, it's community it's the the local business aspect uh, to to all that. So so what else? I mean, so so 2012, you you you're you're here. I mean, you've watched downtown transform. What's your favorite place? What's your favorite thing to do in St. Pete? I know you're kind of outdoorsy guy. So um, uh, Stacy always loves to coin it. I love to hobo. Like I just love to like go down, take the dogs out in the park, just 
relax, watch the sunrise, like hang out, meditate a little bit, you know, listen, listen to, listen to a podcast. Like it's just, just being out. Um, <laughs> if you hear that in the background, someone's uh, hanging a picture or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know that I love sailing. So, so sailing is, is fun here. There's so many different ways. And that's, that's another really cool thing. I think with St. Peter's traveling around a lot. I've been to a lot of places where there are cool things to do, but there are so many like ways to learn to do new things here. Um, it's, it's you're the first per- sailor I've spoken to. So tell me like, how did you get into that? Cause that's, that's not just like you're <laughs> h- hopping on a boat and, and have a throttle and steering wheel. There's a whole lot of things going on. So it was, it was an odd thing. Um, I'd never been into sailing, never thought it would even be something I would be interested in. Um, I boated growing up in Virginia on lakes. And to me, like, I love boating. I love being out on the water, but to me, it's like driving a car on the water. Fair enough. Um, and you get there and you get there faster or slower, depending on what kind of boat you're on, but it's, it's, it's a mode of transportation. So buddy of mine and I were going to go out and go paddle boarding. Somebody had borrowed his paddle and not returned it. So he was like, Hey, you want to go out on the sailboat? It's like, sure. So we jumped on the sailboat. We headed out. He showed me the ropes, literally. And um, he's like, you, you want to take over and try it out? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Took over. And like within five minutes, I was asking him, all right, so to get started, like what kind of boat do I need? What, you know, what do I need to do? You How were hooked that fast. Hooked that fast. And, and the reason why, like my mind is always going. Like I'm always thinking. I get it. Me too. It stopped me from thinking. Mm, like brought I'm, you to the present I'm moment. Out on the water. Brought me to the present moment. And it was like just it was so calming doing it. And so that was that was like the I'll say like the 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 small magic part. The real magic part was when I actually got good at it and I didn't have to think about what I was doing. You just knew what to do. I knew what to do. Like opening a doorknob. But still, like subconsciously, you're still making all those decisions. You're still you're still calculating all those variables and it it just it stills my mind. And now I don't have to think about what I'm doing, and my mind's still still. I want so. a sailboat now. <laughs> You've sold it. I, I love that. I love I'm it. a big meditator myself. I'll do all the things. So to to hear you say that, make I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Because you're right. If you're cruising uh, in, on your boat and you're, you know, you can still be thinking, doing mm-hmm. whatever, thinking about tomorrow. Because you just gotta hold the steering wheel, make sure you don't yeah. hit anything. Yeah. But sailing is a totally different ball game. Yeah. No texting while sailing. No texting while <laughs> sailing. <laughs> I love that. How long did it take you to learn? Like, can you, I mean, you need a mentor. So, yeah. So had a mentor, went out, kind of got all the basics down, signed up for, and we've got actually a few different places in St. Pete to learn, but I just, I signed up for USF has a sailing course, did the sailing course at USF, um, and then just Anybody that I met or knew that was into sailing went out sailing with them because I figure, A, it's a good time, and B, like, I'm, I'm going to learn different things from different people. So one of my other buddies was, like, a sailboat racer. Okay, so USF, there's a sailboat course. I'm, when you said that, I'm like, well, what does that entail? Like, I'm scuba certified. I'm skydive certified. I, I want to start my private pilots this year. Now it sounds like I need to get my, my sailing. Uh, <laughs> is that a certification or is it just like good to have so you don't wreck your sailboat so, or get stuck? Yeah, so very good to have. And you learn a lot of the basics. And, and now we're going to have to go to the pilot thing too because I just I started my PPL thing mm. this past year. Awesome, so, awesome. Um, so yeah, there's you learn a lot of the basics. You learn a lot of not tying and like what, like you learn the intuitive when you're on the boat of like what to do and how things react. But when you go through the course, you learn why some of those things happen, Mm. which is allows you to prepare a little bit better, allows you to kind of be ahead of the curve when things happen. Cause wind and, and, and tides and those things change quickly. And especially if you if you run into a storm, which everybody loves to like to poke fun at me, because like anytime there was a storm, like when I first started sailing, I have a little sunfish. I was like running to go get out in the storm and the sunfish. And they're like, what are you thinking? I'm like, here's the thing. I want to sail like all kinds of places. I would much rather go out in a storm and learn how to deal with it here on a little tiny boat that it's okay if it sinks and I can swim back to shore <laughs> than to have it happen on a three hundred thousand dollar boat in the middle of the Pacific. R- right, right, right. No, that makes sense. So you're like, let me go, let me go train up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah. Okay, that absolutely. makes sense. Uh, no, that I makes a lot of sense to me. Never would have thought that there was a course for sailing, but it makes a lot of sense because it's definitely uh, not an easy thing to do. And it's funny because I've I've joked with buddies like. 
I don't know, you know, other people maybe, I, I, I don't know about sailing. It seems slow, whatever, but to the point, to your point, there's, you got to keep everything in check and, oh, yeah. and watching every, the tides, the wind, everything happening. And it's I, amazing. Like, uh, you know, 10 to 14 knots feels completely different on a sailboat than it does in a car, or, you know, on a normal boat. What's, have you had any crazy close calls or anything happen? Um, so probably I, nothing crazy. I mean, definitely like on the little sunfish, like I've definitely capsized it a few times. Like I, I'm, I'm definitely that guy that like wants to push all the boundaries and like figure out what you can and can't yeah. do. And again, you want to do it on a little boat, like a sunfish that you can. And how out. small, I don't know what a sunfish, how so small. Sunfish is, I think it's like 14 feet. Okay. Um, it's like 14 feet. There's, you, you can fit one person comfortably, two people and still be mobile. You can get more than two people on there, but no one's going to be comfortable. <laughs> Got, it. <laughs> Got it. So you're out by yourself a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Got it. So when's the plans to get the bigger boat? So, um, it's very soon, yeah. very soon. <laughs> um, when are you sailing it's been the nice. Pacific? I have, I have some friends that have bigger boats, so it's been fun, you know, you learning it. and doing the thing on theirs, but yeah, it's very soon. Okay, cool, cool. I love that. And you said you recently started your private pilots. I did. Yeah. W- where so, are you doing that at? Here Saint locally? Peter. Yeah. Okay, St. Cool. Peter, Albert Wooded Airport. Nice. Um, another amazing thing about downtown St. Pete, like, you know, you can literally just like walk over to the airport jump in a plane and yep. go, go get your PPL. Yeah. <laughs> and how far along in the process are you? Um, so I have gone up, I'm going to say probably at this point, 15, 20 times. Nice. Um, so probably about halfway through the process. It's, it's a little bit different for everyone because there's a certain number of hours that you have to have. Mm-hmm. Um, but really the, the final answer is once you've passed that number, it's when you and the instructor both feel comfortable with saying, okay, we're going to cut you loose. Right. Um, now you go, do your test and, and, uh, and, and you're, you're on your own. So it's been really fun. It's, there are parts of it are there, that are way less challenging than I thought they would be. And then there are other parts that have, that are like more challenging than you would Like think. what? Tell me. Um, so actually doing, doing the calls, like. To tower. To, and to, to tower like yeah. it's, it's like, it's a memory project of like remembering what to do, remembering what order everything goes in. Um, remembering who you're talking to because you're switching from like ground to air, yep. um, switching from airport to airport. Um, so that's probably one of the things that I never would have, have even considered being challenging um, because like you learn it and you, you've got it down. But then like with anything else, it's like you, when you're when you're actually under fire and doing it. Remembering what to do is a whole different story. I I um. totally understand. <laughs> in, the, in the military, I was aircraft maintenance and doing. We, I had to talk to tower all the time. Oh, and yeah. there's a specific order of, of procedures that you have to say in order to tower. And if they're talking to a plane, you got to be listening of, of who's got the right of way and hold for the taxi line here and you know all, all the things. So that's absolutely. And in this area, we have so many. Like we have so many airports and we have, we have an air force base close by. Yeah. So there's a so. lot happening up there in, in the sky. Anyone that, that lives here, you look up, you see the planes taking off uh, all, all the time and lots of air traffic up there. And they're all having to be in communication with somebody and almost, you know, 20, yeah, all the time. Absolutely. All the time. What's the easier part that you see? Um, take off and landing. Honestly, I will say, it was definitely different. So I'd done several takeoff and landings on my own. And I was like, man, this is easy. I will say when we started, when we started doing touch and goes, especially in downtown St. Pete, it's a little interesting because you're making a really tight loop and you've got the downtown building. So you have like some wind shear mm. coming through the buildings. And as you're coming around, like you're basically buzzing towers and then like you're, you're on a turn and then you're like Come trying to line up and you don't really know what the wind speed's doing because you've got that wind shear through the building. And it's interesting because like gliding in, you can kind of feel what's going on. You get your bearings quickly. But when you're making a tight loop and then coming down for a landing and then taking right back off and doing a tight loop and doing it again, it is challenging. Like the very first time, and I was really good with my call that day. It was fun. So <laughs> coming in, and I'm thinking, I got this down pat. Like I've been taking off and landing like a champ. This is gonna be easy. <laughs> a little and touch I and goes. In, I got him. I come in for this first touch and go, and I'm like getting it lined up, and I think I'm working everything right. And I look, and I'm like diagonal at like a 15 degree, and I'm kind of aiming toward the hangar instead of the runway. And I just called it. I'm like, boom. Back on the throttle. We're pulling tower, up. 
going around. Mm, yeah. 918 Sierra yeah. going around. <laughs> and uh, it was funny. My instructor's like, I don't know that I've had people on their very first go around. Like when you're, when you're saying, I'm not going to land anymore. I'm going back up. He's like, I don't know that I've ever had anybody do the call. And I was like, it was a quick run through in my head because I was like, I know I don't feel comfortable landing this plane right. at this point, and I know I'm supposed to do something, so let me get this out. <laughs> right. I love that. I love that. Those are good stories. I can't I can't wait to, to have my own because as you're, sh- you're sharing that, I'm like, oh, my God, I can't I can't wait. Because, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I've been in a lot of planes. I've flown different things and then jumping out of them, feeling the wind speed, feeling yep. the pockets of air different with your body. So, like, you know, and then in a plane, the planes are so much lighter than what people think. Oh yeah. And so a little gust of wind, you know, can go a long way. And so, Absolutely. you know, did you talk about wind blowing through the buildings? People aren't even thinking that that's, uh, that's a thing, but it's all changing the, the oh, yeah. air, air patterns up there. That's really cool. That's really cool. When do you have it like a deadline to when you want to finish that? So definitely this year, I'm hoping earlier this year than later, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I really had hoped to actually finish it by the end of this past year. So yeah, I, I think, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned you had some things going on in Texas. What, what do you got going on out there? Um, so we, we work nationwide. Um, we've, we've been focusing on Texas quite a bit this year. So, uh, or this past year. So we, we were out there, I think six times this past year. Mm. Um, doing different events and you know, just doing doing the grassroots marketing. Got thing. it, promoting. I did not know that you were nationwide. That's pretty we cool. We are. Alaska and Hawaii, we don't currently service everywhere else we do. Alaska and Hawaii probably. When did you guys start year. that? Um, the nationwide thing? No, just um, you tell you. Gener- yeah. A little over five years ago okay, we started. Got it. Got um, it. We launched a little over five years ago. We we spent about two years building out prior to launch, but yeah, we've been launched for a little over five years now. Love that. That's awesome. Great to see success and that you guys are, are crushing out there, helping lots of people. Um, talking about St. Pete and all the great things. Got the air. And man, I love that you brought up the sailing and flying because those are things and the communities here that maybe not a lot of people think about, you know, it's always, well, like the restaurants downtown or whatever, but to get into the boating scene or the aircraft scene, you know, oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a whole different world. And I can't wait to keep touching on that uh, in, in the future. What do you think St. Pete is missing? <sighs> missing. That's a hard one. I mean, we, we have so much. What is St. Pete missing? And you can say nothing. You can say it's got everything in it. it <laughs> <want>. I'm <laughs> sure there is something I could think of, but off the top of my head, like I can't really think of anything. I mean, it's just we have all the things. Like we have the the small town vibe. We have, you know, access to anything. We have two, two international, really three international airports within a, a super short drive. Um, and um, – a lot of direct flights to a lot of places, which uh, travels a, a big thing for me. And yeah, the beaches, um, hiking. I mean, that's another thing a lot of people don't think about being near the coast in Florida. Like there's a lot of hiking. There's a lot of other outdoor activities that don't involve being out on the water, but um, yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, mountains, I guess. Mountains, mountains is a good one. <laughs> mountains is a good one. I tell everyone, I need another home out in Colorado or somewhere. Just oh, have yeah. balance. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's just nature out there is a little bit different. But you're right. Okay, so I'll take that. Uh, you know, we had Max on from Shave Cave, and his thing was uh, an Apple store. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but as you say that, you bring Apple. Apple is going to show up where there's other big box and big business. So maybe we don't want them. Yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is like, I know, I know you mentioned you, you don't like going over the bridge. I'm one of those rare birds. I go over the bridge. We actually, um, our, our headquarters for utility helpers, we actually moved to channel side. Mm. Um, and that was strategic. We had a lot of employees that lived in Hillsboro, like far out in Hillsboro. We actually had a couple out in Polk. Um, we had people like from all over Pinellas. So it was like kind of an easy central place that everybody could get to. Um, and the crazy thing is, is the traffic, if you're going rush hour from here to Tampa, it's not nearly as bad as if you're trying to go from Tampa to here. Same thing, coming home right. at night, it's not right. nearly as bad coming yeah. across the bridge this direction. I have noticed that. And it's not that I won't cross the bridge, you know, <laughs> and especially with my cousin being over there now, I'm starting to um, enjoy it a little more. Uh, I just, it's a funny joke, you know, that I like to oh, yeah. keep keep going. It's true, though. There's it, a lot of people that are like straight up, like, I'm like, hey, why don't you come over and grab a I don't go to Tampa. <laughs> well, it's funny you bring up, we were just talking about this uh, on, on the show previous that the, with the Rays stadium, what are your thoughts on that? Have you been paying attention to that at all with the a, development a project? Bit, a little bit, you know, I, I think, I think either way would be fine. I know, I have faith in like our community as a whole, like if the stadium did move, 
I have no doubt that that area is going to be developed into an amazing something. Right. Like everything that I've seen, every stage of the development, it's been well thought out. We've we've gotten amazing things. The the culture and the vibe have actually improved with the growth. Um, so like yeah, I don't I don't I'm not really concerned either way. Are you a baseball fan? Um, no. <laughs> so, so it doesn't really matter to admittedly, you. Admittedly, no. No, that's all right. It's, hey, you either are or not, right? It's, I would it's, say it's I'm, a little slow for me. Yeah, well, I have to go to the game. Okay, and and so you know I have. I haven't actually been to a Rays game yet here. No one throw anything at me for, for that. Um, <laughs> um, and when, But I lived in Philadelphia, and I loved going to the Phillies games. They, they were a lot of fun. Watching on TV, not so much. So, you know, we were talking about that. It, attendance here for the Rays game needs to improve, so maybe a stadium and better things around there can help that. Um, and I wonder what it would do if, the, if they did go across the bridge and went over into Tampa. But I think it's all just a... a a D, I don't know what it is. I think people are just dragging this through the mud for no reason. And uh, we got the plans all figured out. Let's just approve them. Let's let's start the project. Let's get it moving and keep them here on this side. Um, because let's admit it, anyone from Tampa, you know you like coming over here. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, there, there are a lot less people in Tampa that say they don't go to St. Pete right. than the other way around. Right, right. 100%. Yeah, 100%. And, and it's true. We've got We've got football. We've got hockey. On yeah. the other side of the bridge. Yeah, come over like, here for baseball. It's yeah, fine. Absolutely. It's fine. You know, you've you've experienced a lot, I'm sure, in, in growing this business. What's a, either a, a book or a mentor? Who's helped you get to where you are today? Um, that's, that's another loaded question. There's so much, so much. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go with uh, books. I mean, I've, I've, literally have a library full of books and, and um, if you were to give one away, you could pick one. I give books away all the time. I'll say, let's say this for business. My one, two punch that I always recommend to people that are going into business that haven't been it before, been in it before E-Myth revisited, Mm. um, followed up by traction. I haven't read either one of those. Oh yeah. You're in for a treat. So E-Myth, I love getting people into because it's, it doesn't get into the nuts and bolts. What it does is it really lays out the principles of the difference between being self-employed and or 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 really just jobbing mm-hmm. and actually building and running a business, um, and it does it in like simple terms. It does it like basically talking about like a bakery um, and the difference between being a baker and running a bakery, um, and it really helps people think to like build to scale um, to to make it to where it's not always them. Not like take themselves out of it and say, mm-hmm. yes, I'm doing this at this moment, mm-hmm. but what does it look like when somebody else does this part of my job? What does it look like when someone else does this part of my job? What does it look like when this is a full running business and I'm, I'm shipping stuff all over the country? Um, and, and it does it in a way that someone who hasn't been in business before can digest it easily. And then I always have them follow up with traction. Once they've gotten through that and kind of got the principles down, then traction and traction really is the same thing, but it's the nuts and bolts. It's the, the nitty gritty. Everything yeah. happens. Love that. What are you reading now? Um, right now I'm actually, um, and it's funny because anybody that knows me, any, anytime I talk about this book, they're like, really <laughs> you, you with that book. So I'm, I'm rereading for probably the 10th time four hour work week. And Tim Ferriss. But yes. And most people are like, but you're, you're not a four hour work week kind of guy. It's, it's not so much about working four hours. It's about how can I make the time that I'm, that I'm using more effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and every time I go through it, I get another, just a little different nugget out of it. That That is a good one. I, I've read it a very long time ago. So maybe I'll have to revisit now that you're saying you, you've gone through it here a few times, but it's true. I, I think about that with, with, my days all the time of how can I make this hour the most productive? What's the thing that I should be doing right now Mm -hmm. that's going to yield the biggest return and whatever that means. Right. And it's a constant battle. I feel like, yeah. How how do you feel like you have that same kind of thing? Like always trying to same kind of thing. And and I'll say same, same thought, but a little opposite take is what should I not be doing? Yes. That I'm doing. I love that. <laughs> I love that. It's more often the problem. Right. What am What am I doing that I shouldn't be? Doing? Well, that is like okay because that's not the most productive use of my time in this yep. moment. They could someone else be doing it. Yeah, absolutely. I get that. I get that. So you mentioned it was a little bit of a loaded question. So what else has helped you get here, or who else? I should say. So, um, so many people. You know, I, I, um, I, I 
been lucky enough, oddly enough, in traction, I had an epiphany when I was going through traction the first time. It has nothing to do with the real principles of the book, but they were kind of breaking down the character roles of people within a business. And I realized like my, my business partner now, and actually my, my business partners on two other businesses all fell into this role. And it was just by happenstance that it happened that we were really good matches for working together. So that's, that's definitely one big thing is finding people that, that fill in the gaps for me and mm-hmm. that I fill in the gaps for. Um, and it's not always intuitively what you want to do. Like when you're, when you're going into it, you love being around people that are just like you. I get that. And you don't need yeah. people that are just no, like, you're you like I got that part covered. <laughs> I need the opposite. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely one biggie is just surrounding, surrounding myself with the right people. Um, and that's been people in, in roles where, where I've been in, in, in a employment role, yeah. roles in business, um, coaches, um, just having people that, that they have that different mindset, they have that different set of strengths. What's life look like for you in the next three years? Um, hopefully a little more travel than, than it has been in the last three years. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you trying to go? Um, everywhere. <laughs> um, so it, it, really there's uh, we, we, we have a, a pretty good list. Um, and we've, we've been, we've been checking off a few, but definitely uh startup life is not, uh, not the easiest. Um, <laughs> and, no. um, so yeah, been trying to carve out more time, but yeah, definitely more travel, um, and, and definitely business expansion. We, we, we've, we've gone national and there's so many other things. Like that's the one thing that I love about, about utility helpers is we, we have the ability to help with so many things. So it's like, normally I'm, I'm pretty easily bored. And I'm mm-hmm. never bored because there's always something else. Like we always have customers like, hey, this was awesome. Have you ever thought about offering this? And um, so that that's. Do you have an example like, of that? That's something that you've implemented since? So sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things was we we ended up, we added in moving trucks. Moving trucks and and professional movers was not something we had done. In the beginning, it was really just the utilities, the home services. Um, that was one of the things that uh, that we added in. We had a lot of people asking for it. We were we were definitely reluctant um, as we were as we were putting it together, and we we probably sat on it a little longer than we should have, just because we we have a really good reputation, and we don't want to mess that up. Right. And moving is one of those things where, especially when you're dealing with professional movers that it can go sideways right. easily. So we we really spent some time structuring what that looked like and how we would have control over making sure that the customer experience was there. And so help me the like how did you do that? What what like in such a delicate process, how do you protect your reputation? So a lot of vetting, a lot of meeting people that knew people to find out like the inner workings of how some of these companies worked. Um, and then building out our agreements in a way that we had a little control over like, Hey, if this is, if this becomes a problem, how are you going to take care of it? How's it going to be addressed? What type of warranty and insurances and coverage are you going to offer? How are you going to make sure that the customer is right? And then us having some teeth in that agreement to where we can make sure that it's taken care of. And it's been beautiful. Like we, we literally have almost zero complaints, which especially when it comes to, to moving services is, is a, a hard. <laughs> that is, that's, I'm, 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 that, I love to hear that. And it, it, it's all the due diligence that happens in the back end that people probably can't appreciate that to make things go smoothly oh, yeah. as they do. Absolutely. What would you say, you know, in growing this company has been the biggest challenge? Biggest challenge has definitely been um, finding enough of the right talent. Um, we, we pride ourselves on, providing an amazing customer experience. And that starts with like the people within your company, mm-hmm. the customer facing ones and the non-customer facing ones, because if, if people don't care, then things aren't going to get done the way that they need to get done. So that's, that's definitely been the hardest thing is finding enough good quality people. It's been a blessing in disguise because we have built a lot of automation and a lot of systems because we could not find enough people. Um, so it's been a good thing for the company financially because at the end of the day, if you can automate something and build a system around it and have the people do the things that can't be automated and can't have systems run them, it, it definitely makes for a more efficient operation. But yeah, that's definitely been the, the biggest challenge. And 
Um, we're, we're still figuring out how to do that more gracefully because we, we keep growing a little faster than we can hire. So <laughs> a good, good, bad problem to have, right? It is. Yeah, absolutely. What's the, what's your day to day look like now? Um, day to day is usually, I would say probably about 30% of my day is working on developing new systems, um, making sure that all of our, all of our like things that are coming 60, 90, 120 days down the line, we're, we're prepped for them. Um, probably the, the next 30% of the time would be, um, building relationships, do like doing the expansion of the business. The other 30% of the time is addressing anything that fell through the cracks and needs, <laughs> needs you put your firefighter hat on <laughs> exactly. and go exactly. out there to put out some fires. Exactly. You said 30% out doing the things that I know you're pretty involved in the community. What are some things happening in St. Pete? What, what, what organizations are you a part of? Um, so, you know, probably the one that I spend the most time and involvement in is Pinellas Realtor Organization. I'm on the board of directors there. Um, and, that one has been such an amazing one to be a part of. Um, our affiliate group, um, basically, we we support the real estate industry, and our big focus is raising money for charities and doing community events. So that's that's probably where the bulk of my time, as far as like events and communities, um, goes. Um, and it's so rewarding because we have such an amazing group of people and everybody's passionate about supporting local charities and, and pretty much all of the local charities that we support are things that are locally run and really can use the money. Um, cause there's, you know, there are a lot of amazing charities out there and mm -hmm. a lot of them get, which ones are you supporting? Amazing support. So we pick four per quarter. Okay. Um, so or, I'm sorry, four, four per year, one oh, per quarter. Got it. Um, right now it's action and, uh, Jackson in action, which is one that actually supports military families. Um, that, that have people deployed. Um, and, um, it's a, it's a really cool organization. The, the founder of it actually, uh, sadly has passed away, but, um, really cool organization was started locally actually by one of the, the Bucks players. Mm, cool. Um, and, um, that, that one is, is really fun. Um, and we've supported so many, the, probably one of my favorites, um, has been Silver Santa's. Um, and that one is one that uh, that we usually try to do around the Christmas season. Um, and basically, it's it's getting donations and and getting products donated for people that are like in assisted living, nursing homes that don't have families to to provide for them, give them gifts. And I love that. that. So I that love that. Super rewarding. Yeah, that one definitely. And that's that's a, a group and a community that probably gets forgotten about more than we think about. Absolutely. Um, especially those that don't have, uh, have loved ones in their lives. I love that. Um, Elijah, I know you're doing so many awesome things uh, through the community. I just want to say thank you uh, for, for doing that. I mean, that you guys are supporting because I, he, there's, I don't know anyone that I've met in the industry that doesn't know who you are. <laughs> um, yeah, so that says a lot about how, how active you are out there, uh, in the community. So, so that's really awesome. Um, I mean, think it, you were saying, uh, expanding three years, doing, doing all the fun things. Is there anything fun coming down the pipeline that you can let us know about, or is it all Let's top see. secret? Let's see. Fun stuff. Um, what kind of fun stuff do we want to know about? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if there's any new service that you guys are thinking about providing that, you know, is maybe, you know, like you just talked about adding the movers. Sure. There, so, so one of the ones that we're, we're working on and it's similar to the mover thing. We want to make sure that it's done right. One of the number one questions we get asked by people when we set everything else up, they're like, do you have somebody for like lawn service or like all of like those regular maintenance items? And it's such a hard thing to do. Like we're a company that services nationally and there's not like a plug and play. Like there's right. not like a national company that I can say like, Hey, we're just going to use them and they're going to, they're going to do the right. lawn mowing for all over the country. So um, we're actually looking at at this point, building out like a national franchise for lawn care and home service on that side to then be able to use and know that we have control. Wait, wait, that, that's not, <laughs> you said that nonchalant, like, like so nonchalantly as if that isn't a huge thing. Oh, we're just going to start our own national landscape. Not going to be fast or easy, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, that's... Wow. That's, uh, you know, we've just, we've looked at like all of the different angles. And if someone comes with an idea that works better than that, I would love to not have to do uh, that. Right. But it's just, it's one of those things that we're constantly getting asked for. Like we know there's the need for it. Yeah, you know, you um, have the customer. Like, I'm sorry, I'm just bet, like, yeah. That's huge. That was like a big, <laughs> <laughs> that's a big take. Is that in the three-year plan, five-year plan? Ten, um, like what's that look like? 
I hesitate to give like yeah. a, a date just because no, I know it's going to be a huge undertaking, right, and yeah. I, know, I know I don't know what it looks like right, yet. Yeah, but it's, um, but it's definitely definitely something that you guys are massaging, and working hopper, on, yeah. thinking on how do we make this happen. Absolutely, that's huge. That's really cool. Uh, that, I'm glad it, well, we, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you, heard, you heard it here. Uh, that that's really awesome. What what are some of your favorite places to eat in St. Pete? Uh, let's see, La Vie is definitely. Uh, Definitely high on the list. Um, have you been there? I have not. It, it's amazing. Right on Central yeah, Ave. It's a hop and, skipping away. Yeah. 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 Um, La Via is amazing. Um, Naked Farmer. Like, Can't go Naked, wrong. Naked Farmer is just, it's so good every time. Um, and then a little out of the downtown beat, Trips. Tri- I, Trips Diner is awesome. It is awesome. Like it's just, it's that it's that place where you go, it's comfortable the food's good every time. The service is good every time. And it's just, it's very low key. It is very low key. And it's a, 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 a I, I might be going there Monday actually. Um, th- and when you said that, it made me realize what St. Pete is missing because Trips Diner, what I realized when I was there, there's not that in a 24 hour scale for St. Pete. I'm from Pennsylvania. There is a 24 hour diner on every corner <laughs> owned by some different family, something like that. Diners are everywhere. And down here, I, you know, one of those random late nights that you're like, hey, let's let's go to a diner. And I start to Google and realize I can't find anything open other than Denny's, yeah, which is not yeah. not what I was looking for. Yeah. I'm tra- is, I don't know. Is second and second, are they? I don't think so. No? I don't know. I mean, that could be totally wrong, but I. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. But but you're I love that you've mentioned trips because let's give them some some spotlight for a second because they they have that vibe but they're just not open all the time which is fine but it, absolutely it's a really good spot absolutely yeah and for the and for the people a little farther north in Pinellas County same same type of setup Lenny's have you been to Lenny's no so Lenny's is up in Clearwater okay um, right off of 19 um, oddly enough by the baseball stadium up there and um, it's it's actually Phillies themed. Like oh, the cool. whole the whole place is Phillies themed, and um, it's Lenny's. It's yeah, it's definitely. If you haven't been there, it's definitely a a, a must must do. I, I only make it my uh, sister and brother in law live up near Clearwater right now, so that's my only reason really to go up there. Unless someone is buying property up there, um, so don't make it up there enough. But next time, I'll, I'll have to check that out, especially yeah. if it's got the Philly theme going to it. Cool thing, and and a little secret for all the listeners. They don't do reservations, but they do do call ahead. Mm. So, because there's always a line, right? Always a line at Lenny's, and if you call, like I call when I'm leaving St. Pete, I'm like, "Hey, it's Elijah. I'm coming that way. When I get there, I have a table ready instead of standing in line outside." There it is. <laughs> There's a little sneak. I love that. There, I love that. I'm sure someone in here will, will use that. You know, and you mentioned. I, I just want to talk about the podcast a little bit as we've been going because as you were sitting here and we're talking, I'm like, man. He listened to some episodes before he came on. And then when we first started, there was nothing for people to listen to. We pre-recorded four or five episodes ahead of time. So we didn't have that that banter. And uh, so I'm just curious, as you were listening, how, how can we get better? Who uh, and or and not or and who do you want to see on here? So let's see. So the better I I'd say, like you've done an awesome job. Like yeah. I, I listening to your podcast. I learned things that I didn't know in living here since 2012. That's really cool. Um, and actually, like you've you've had a couple of people on that, like I didn't know them, but it, like we're we're friends of friends, right? And I got to know them a little bit, and definitely like we'll we'll definitely like sweat. Like I'm I'm excited to go check out sweat. You need to let me know when um, you're going. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, like that's and and it's really been it's re, you've done a really good job of doing that and and finding cool people like i don't know exactly how you're finding the people that come on the podcast but you've done a really good job of finding people that like had an interesting story and are people that people should know in St. Pete. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, it's it's been it, we've been very lucky with that. I thought that was going to be harder than it has been, so I don't something is helping us pave the way <laughs> there for that. So that, um, that's cool. Yeah. I'm sure I've got a, a list of people that you should have on. I'm, I'm just. Um, no, it's yeah. We can talk about it after. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's good. good. Um, and it's, I, I just love to hear that and get the feedback. Cause it's definitely inspirational. Cause people say you make it look easy. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, 
this is work, man. <laughs> you know, you're locked in on a conversation after this and you're a little exhausted. And this is the first time we did two back to back today, but I must say you, you, you've been a great guest and, um, have, well, it's have easy it on easy. this side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause you know, I'm just asking, <laughs> asking the questions, right? Now I got to keep it going and flowing, but, um, uh, oh, we did your favorite restaurants. How can people get in touch with you? Um, Facebook, personally, Facebook and Instagram, Elijah Ramsey, I, I, I. Cause oh, no. There's, uh, there's another there's, one out there? There are actually more Elijah Ramseys <laughs> than you would think. And there's actually another, I'm a third. There's actually another Elijah Ramsey, the third, that's like oh, the head that. of the U.S. <laughs> Geological <laughs> Service or something. That's so crazy. Um, so yeah, Elijah Ramsey, I, 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 personally, and then at Utility Helpers, Instagram, Facebook, all, Love the, that. all the places. Love except that. Except for the TikTok. Except for the I haven't, get done, on I haven't the, done the tiki taki yet. Did tiki taki. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's easy to go viral in there. We, we've had some stuff blow up. And YouTube shorts. Okay. YouTube shorts. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. yeah. Posting on YouTube uh, has been awesome. But thank you for coming on. I appreciate Absolutely. you. Appreciate one, all you do. I have one quick question for you. Yeah. Because sure. I know I've learned where or how a lot of your guests have landed in St. Pete, but how did you land in St. Pete? That's a good question. Um, so my sister and brother-in-law moved here in the beginning of the pandemic. I'm in Philadelphia, which is on an extreme lockdown working from home. I helped them move down here and, uh, well, back up a little bit. I used to live in the panhandle of Florida when I was in the service. Okay. When I got out, went back to Pennsylvania to start a business. Um, and as I was there, moved to Philadelphia, went to Temple University, did all the things, but I always knew that I had to get back to Florida. That was just a temporary thing in startup mode. And then when my sister moved down here and I was visiting, I came down here like every three, four weeks because flights out of Philadelphia were $70 round trip. So during COVID, so I was down here all the time and I was like, okay, I, I need to move here. And I changed careers, locations, all just like that. Um, and it has, I mean, it, I, I wouldn't change it for a thing, but people, I, I may make it look like it, things are easy, but you know, to get, move into a place that you don't know. And then what am I doing? I'm selling the area to, to people. And I knew two people when I moved here. So, <laughs> um, so for you to say the comment about the guests, I don't know how it's happening. It's just communities that I've been tapping into. Um, but I've absolutely uh, uh, love St. Pete. I, I've done the big city thing. That's why I'm not so attracted uh, to Tampa, but I can appreciate it. And I love that, that there's a lot going on here, but it still has, has that feel. And that's what kind of led to this show, you know, for, for multitude of reasons, but it's been really fun to connect with like-minded people like yourself and hear their story about how they got here and, and doing all the fun things. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit of how I got here. Awesome. Yeah. I appreciate you asking that. Glad you're here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. Uh, Fam, I'm going to call you fam because we're now this we're eight episodes deep. And if you've been listening uh, to to any of them or you made it this far, I really appreciate you. Please keep sharing, liking, subscribing, tell a friend, and uh, check out Elijah on Facebook, Instagram, all the places. And uh, if you need help moving, we got you, and we'll make sure that you use his service, Utility Helpers. And we will see you on the next one. <laughs>